think so. I think the people outside of Washington are waking up and they're getting the attention of a few in Washington that we have some more waking up to do in D.C. before they change their ways. That we have some more waking up to do in D.C. before they change their ways. Before they change their ways. Here's what you have to battle here. You get somebody, and, and this is gaining traction with people. Ron Paul comes in and he says, well, listen, the only way to really get money out of politics is to remove the government's job of regulating that, because what happens is, if they have any any role in regulation, the lobbyists will be drawn to them. So their idea is, what you were saying, hey man, if it's not going to get done well enough, let's just remove that as a function and allow the free market to, to work its way. And that, by definition, will take money out of politics. I, I think that's an argument that resonates with a lot of people. Yeah, the problem is, we will have no future. But we have some more waking up to do in D.C. before they change their ways. I think that's an argument that resonates with a lot of people. Yeah, the problem is we will have no future. We will have no future. And with that in mind, at, at the last CPAC conference where he beat the other Republicans in the straw poll, he talked about how entitlement programs are unsustainable. And as a thought experiment, he suggested this. But would you consider opting out of the whole system under one condition you pay 10 percent of your income but you take care of yourself don't ask the government for anything by definition we'll take money out of politics I, I think that's an argument that resonates with a lot of people yeah the problem is we will have no future because <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you don't want to soft sell that a little no, bit I, no, no, no. I'm no not future there's no future but we have some more waking up to do in D.C. before they change their ways. Future! There's no future! Think about this. No one's going to build bridges on their own. No one's going to build roads. No one's going to build public education, public universities, public schools. No one's going to invest in the kind of basic research that flings off thousands of things that private industry can do with it. Government is what we do together. The youth is on Ron Paul's side. The more internet literate elder generation are on his side, the people who are with it. The people against Ron Paul are the ones getting all their news from mass media, and that's the problem. Please just turn off the TV. And when people attack and smear Ron Paul like that little bitch that looked like Tom Petty did. They'll say, and uh, CNN does every single time. So well, when are you going to wear yourself out? I mean, out? when you say it's a, no, but, when you, you know, you is it legitimate? I mean, is it a legitimate question to ask that something yeah. went out and of when you get the your name? name? And when so, you get the answer, it's legitimate that you uh, sort of take the answers like it. You know what? You yeah, apathetic it's losers it's that just I, sit I, there and whine and do nothing. Read them at the time. It, it takes you a few minutes, one day out of the whole year, to go vote for Ron Paul. That's all. And you can wallow in your filth and complain and do whatever you want the rest of the whole time, every single day of the rest of the year. All right. All right. Thank you, Congressman. I appreciate your answer. I appreciate your answering the questions. And you understand it's our job to ask. Thank you. The people against Ron Paul are the ones getting all their news from mass media. And that's the problem. Please just turn off the TV. And when people attack and smear Ron Paul like that little bitch that looked like Tom Petty did, you need to find out their email address and start writing them and let them know how you feel. You need to find out their email address and start writing them and let them know how you feel. I, I think that's an argument that resonates with a lot of people. Yeah, the problem is we will have no future. Because... <laughs> soft sell that a little no, bit no, 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 no. no future gonna... there's no future think about this no one's going to build bridges on their own no one's going to build roads no one's going to build right. public education public universities public schools no one's going to invest no one's going to invest they scare me i mean scare me <laughs> No one's going to invest in the kind of basic research that flings off thousands of things that private industry can do with it. Government is what we do together.
Government is the part that lets us come together and build the basic conditions, the infrastructure, the education, the research, the basic pieces together that let us build a future for ourselves and for our kids. We were so scared and we were running and we were trying to hide and they found us. Well, what he's using is fear, fear tactics, and they all do that, whether it's financial, foreign policy, or for, uh, for environmental things. They'll just use fear to in intimidate and try to get people... Well, but people think it's the government that keeps the food safe. Yeah, well, they, they think wrongly. <laughs> <laughs> and Chris Matthews sneered at the idea. You're never going to go onto a federal highway again. You're never going to go to an airport that is regulated by FAA. You're never going to eat a can of tuna fish Inspecting. because of my inspector for town yeah. yeah. You're going to do your own inspections for town right. You're going to inspect it. And your own cancer research? Don't forget about that. And you're going to defend yourself if we're invaded by Canada. You're going to defend yourself against the enemy if anybody attacks you, America. Let's... Thank you. I do like the theory, by the way, of self-reliance. <laughs> but when you get into the real world, it does work. Thank you, David Korn. This has been too easy. This has been way too easy. It's not fair. You're, you're too easy a target. What a silly idea. Well, that's what they say, but uh, these ideas are uh, spreading. And I think uh, the message of liberty is alive and well and growing in this country, so therefore I'm an optimist. Well, let's... Glad there's optimism. Let's break down what Chris Matthews said. With your 10% deal, I couldn't drive on a highway? Well, not, not necessarily. You would have to say that there will be no highways, but, you know, there's uh, a lot of roads now already are privately built or locally built, and, uh, and the, the federal highway system is something that could be handled by a user fee, bef uh, you know, before you have an alternative that. that it isn't the thing that we uh, put on the top of the list and said, you know, what we need is a revolution. we got to close down the federal highway system. So he's wrong in in saying that, what he doesn't realize is there may be more money, you know, available for some of these things that are going broke. All the public things right now are running out of money. All the governments are broke. What he doesn't realize is there may be more money, you know, available for some of these things that are going broke. All the public things right now are running out of money. All the governments are broke. Unregulated airports, he suggests the planes all smash into each other. You know, it, it, and I have this argument a lot in, in Washington about, you know, I will make this statement that we don't need all these federal regulations. Oh, he doesn't want any regulations. Well, when it comes to economics or airlines, you would have other people regulating the property owners, uh, the airlines. Well, when it comes to economics or airlines, you would have other people regulating the property owners, uh, the airlines. And, the airlines uh, don't want to kill their customers? That, that, that is absolutely. They might even be able to provide security. They may even be able to replace the TSA if they realize that. <laughs> he says we'll have poison tuna. <laughs> tuna. Without the government to keep the food safe. Oh, you know, what he's using is fear, fear tactics, and they all do that, whether it's financial, foreign policy, or for, uh, for environmental things. They'll just use fear to in intimidate and try to get people well, But to people be... think it's the government that keeps the food safe. Yeah, well, they, they think wrongly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the food companies that keep their food safe because they want to protect their own reputation. Right. Their and in a free society, they are liable and responsible. You know, I think once government comes in with the regulations and they regulate something bad, then it affects everyone and they're protected because the government said it was okay to do this. He says there'll be no cancer research. And he's absolutely wrong about that. There may be better directed cancer research uh, and not politically directed research. So he, he's, uh, he's wrong on that. He said we wouldn't be able to defend ourselves. Well, I think we'd be a lot a more able to defend ourselves because he doesn't believe much probably in the Second Amendment. And if you believe in a free society, you believe in the Second Amendment, that's where your real protection comes from. <laughs> and you you support defense as a role for government. If Canada attacks us, we should fight back, right? That's right. I use Canada as a good example. We should treat all countries like Canada as our friends and trading partners and don't give them any foreign aid. <laughs>
Ron Paul comes in and he says, well, listen, the only way to really get money out of politics is to remove the government's job of regulating that. Because what happens is if they have any, any role in regulation, the lobbyists will be drawn to them. So their idea is what you were saying, hey, man, if it's not going to get done well enough, let's just remove that as a function and allow the free market to, to work its way. And that, by definition, will take money out of politics. I, I think that's an argument that resonates with a lot of people. Yeah, the problem is we will have no future. You need to find out their email address and start writing them and let them know how you feel.